if that transistor element were to fail, uh, it could cause a short circuit, which could cause this to draw too much amperage, which could cause it to overheat, which could cause it to catch on fire, which could potentially burn your car to the ground. And that's where the safety recall comes into play. Hey, what's going on everyone? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another video. Really not a traditional DIY today. Uh, rather, we're gonna be uh, educating you out there about this huge recall that BMW currently has on N52, N51, and N52N, or K, or N52TU engines. For those of you who are not in the know, and maybe for those of you who have received the mailings from BMW or anybody out there who is kind of curious to see what the safety recall is about, it is about the PCV connector that's connected directly to the intake manifold. So here you have the updated part right here, which is the angle connector. This has been updated by BMW a couple times. In fact, there were two other recalls specifically for this part. Uh, however, the most recent update to that recall involves retrofitting this fused harness, and we're going to get into the details on that today of pretty much what is going to be done if you were to take the car to the dealership to have the vehicle done under recall, which we're encouraging you to do, but we want to provide a full video on what all this looks like, what's being replaced, why it's being done, how all of this works, and also where the problem originated from. So with that said, we're going to be working on a 2011 BMW 328i today. Uh, this recall affects 917,000 cars in total. Uh, and again, it's any N52, N51, or N52N, or N52TU engine. So really 2006 to 2013. Uh, and again, if you received a letter in the mail from BMW about this, everything you see in this video is going to apply to you. So it's really not uncommon on a lot of newer cars to have some kind of heating element on the crankcase ventilation system. In the case of the N52, there was a generation one that had the magnesium valve cover that had a external PCV valve and PCV hoses. Those all had individual heating elements, which were controlled by a relay, which was controlled by the DME. However, the angle connector, which is attached to the intake manifold, this is on all the time. It's a self-regulating element, so it has a transistor in it. It receives 12 volts of power as soon as the car is uh, basically put into accessory mode or ignition. Uh, so this is always on no matter what the temperature is outside. And that is where the problem has arisen over time is the original design of this heating element. If that transistor element were to fail, uh, it could cause a short circuit, which could cause this to draw too much amperage, which could cause it to overheat, which could cause it to catch on fire, which could potentially burn your car to the ground, and that's where the safety recall comes into play. This heating element has been redesigned to be less failure prone. However, the fact of the matter is it's receiving voltage all the time. If this were to suffer a problem again, the fused power supply that this angle connector pulls power from, if this were to short out, it's not going to pop that fuse. And we could show you a wiring diagram so you can understand why that is. So the retrofit aspect of this, or the permanent fix, is to install this inline fuse, which is a seven and a half amp fuse. If this were to short out, it would pop this seven and a half amp fuse, and that would prevent anything from, you know, happening in terms of this catching on fire or potentially burning your car down. Uh, with that said, this recall is being done by BMW. It's free of charge. These parts are available. And uh, we're going to demonstrate the installation procedure on this 2011 328i behind us. Again, we're, we're not here to sell these parts. We just simply want to educate the general population on why this recall is important and why you should have it done if you own one of these cars. In the description, we'll have a full list of all the vehicles that are affected. We'll also link you to the open recall. The recall information and the specifics on are available through the National Highway Transit Safety Administration. Uh, so this is all pretty much open record, but we want to go ahead and just give you all the information so you know exactly what's going on with this and provide you a little bit more context on why this is an important repair to get done. So with that said, we're gonna show you the procedure on this and the work that's done so you can understand when you take the car to the dealership uh, to get this job performed. Okay, so um, like we mentioned, these engines are installed in a whole bunch of different cars. So the overall procedure is gonna vary from car to car. However, the work that's gonna be done under the recall is exactly the same. Uh, no matter what car it's in. So number one, replace the angle connector. Number two, install the uh, retrofit harness in order to install an inline fuse, which will prevent the car from ever going nuclear and catching on fire. With that said, on this uh, E92, uh, we need to remove the cowl cover at the back of the engine bay in order to gain access to the DME box because we need to find a very specific wire uh, in order to install the 
retrofit harness. Uh, we're going to do that first because what I want to show you is with the key on, what the amp draw looks like, and also we're going to show you how hot that angle connector gets. So uh, we're going to go ahead and remove everything from the engine bay that we need to do in order to gain access to the DME box, and then we're going to go from there. So at this point in the operation, this is when somebody just kind of guesses at which one it is and you snip the wire and hope it's the right one and nobody blows up and dies. That's how the movies are at least. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at the information from BMW on this car. I know that the wire is going to be orange and I know that it has to be a certain uh, diameter of wire. That's Yes, you heard me right. That's how you have to identify the wire that needs to be spliced into. Um, but the important thing to know is that um, this angle connector is supplied by a 30 amp fuse from the fuse box inside the passenger compartment of the car. Uh, that 30 amp fuse powers a bunch of other items. It's not just the angle connector. So uh, the issue here is, is that even if the angle connector were to short out, um, that short is not enough to pop that 30 amp fuse. So it'll just continue until it melts down and possibly catches on fire. So um, I'm going to figure out which wire is which here. I'm pretty sure that the splice we're looking for is this one right here. I'm going to confirm real quick. Be back in one second. All right, so um, just confirmed. On your E90s, it looks like the splice that we need to get to is in this wiring harness or part of the engine wiring harness here. So I'm going to pull back uh, this rubber grommet and then it's one of these splices in here. So I'm actually looking for a splice that has six orange wires in it. Now, originally I was looking at this, but that's another one that has multiple orange wires. So we're going to trust the information that we've been provided. And we're gonna go ahead and push this back as far as possible and get access to the group of wires that we need to splice into. I'll rewrap this part of the harness with some Tessa tape uh, once we've completed this. So we have multiple groupings of orange wires here. I'm looking for a grouping that has six orange wires. So this has seven and this has six. We're looking for the splice that has six, uh, which is this right here. Now, I said that this group of wires is, is powered by one 30 amp fuse, and that is 100% correct. So uh, the big wire is, is this one here in the middle. That is basically the power feed. And then the five smaller wires are five individual components that are powered by that one 30 amp fuse, one of which is going to be the angle connector. The angle connector wire i'm almost positive it's going to be this one right here it's going to be the uh, medium sized wire but i have to measure it for thickness first so let me do that to confirm all right so i'm looking for a wire that measures between 1.7 and 1.9 millimeters and again i want to make sure i'm on the correct splice here six this right here i think is going to be the one we're looking for. So we have this one here, which is 1.75. Kind of pull that one off to the side. And we got this one here, which is going to be our bigger wire. This is our power feed. And that's 2.2 to 2.4. So that's the bigger one. And then we have four of these thinner ones which are going to be between 1.44 and 1.6. Okay, so our wire is this one right here, which measures 1.84 millimeters, which is actually right in the middle. Uh, so this is a 0.75 millimeter um, gauge wire. It's all metric wiring. So this right here is our power feed for the angle connector. And that is the one that we're going to put this inline fuse on. And I want to go ahead and pull 
this back far enough that I can kind of cut it somewhere in the middle. And I'm also going to mark that wire just so that I, uh, when we come to put the retrofit harness in, that I don't mix it up with anything else. Here's our uh, little retrofit harness. This is part of the recall. This is going to allow us to put a seven and a half amp fuse in line. And uh, really just a matter of connecting both those ends of the wire. It's really not that complicated. Uh, the only difficult part is obviously finding the splice that you have to do this to. And then, you know, measuring the wire diameter because they're all orange. <laughs> Okay, so went ahead and finished the splice. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrap this harness with some of this uh, Tessa tape so that it uh, stays together. Go ahead and pull the sheathing back around the harness like it was before. And we'll slide it back in. And now this is our retrofit harness that we installed. Actually, there's a pretty nice place right here for a fuse holder. So I'm going to route this so that we can put it into an accessible place, just in case a fuse ever happens to pop on this. So we've installed the retrofit harness to basically put the inline fuse in. Um, I have the multimeter here set to amps. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna power the car on. I'm not gonna start the engine. I'm literally just gonna put it into accessory mode. Uh, the, the amps will basically come up and then they'll start to drop off. I also have a uh, temp probe here, which I'm gonna stick at the angle connector to show that even with the car not running, the angle connector is preheating. Um, so I'm gonna do that real quick. I'll just put the car in accessory mode. It's gonna power that circuit and I'll show you what's going on here. I mean, you can see the temperature kind of coming up slowly. There it goes. It's coming up a couple of tenths at a time. Uh, so as the temperature is increasing, our amp draw is dropping. Uh, that's because it needs to hit a certain target temperature. And once it does, once the angle connector rather really hits a target temperature, uh, this will be drawing a couple of tenths of an amp, uh, anywhere between 0.4 to 0.8. Um, but you could see the uh, temperature is increasing pretty steadily right now. So as, again, as that's coming up to temperature, we're seeing uh, the amps dropping off. Uh, but that's pretty much how it works. So power on, that connector is automatically heating, and this is supposed to be self-regulating. Um, and that is kind of the design flaw here, is that if the regulating element in that angle connector fails, uh, there's nothing to stop it from continually going. Um, and again, the whole point of that angle connector is to prevent freezing inside the crankcase ventilation system, specifically at the point where it goes into the intake manifold. Um, so step one here was installing that seven and a half amp fuse or the retrofit harness for the seven and a half amp fuse. The next step of this would be to actually replace the angle connector now with the updated part, which we'd still have to do. And then once we do that, we have to do the amp draw test all over again. So I'm gonna leave all of that the way it is right now, but we know that uh, we've wired this incorrectly, so we can move on to the next step. But this is pretty much the biggest step in this entire recall is installing that harness so that you can put the 7.5 amp fuse in line, which will prevent all of this from ever being a problem again. Yeah, so our amp draw is fairly consistent now, and our temperature is also fairly consistent. Of course, it does change a little bit. My hands are shaking as I'm moving around here. Um, so that's going to affect the temperature reading. Um, but you know, our amp draw is pretty much static and our temperature is pretty much static right now too. So 
Yeah, we know we wired it incorrectly. We followed the instructions from BMW, and like I said, it's going to vary from car to car, but the general process is the same. Find the splice, install the retrofit harness. Um, part of the test is once you install the new angle connectors to do an amp draw test like this and, and make sure that you're within spec. Um, but uh, between the angle connector being replaced and installing the retrofit harness, that is the final part of the safety recall because this has now been like a three-step process of rectifying this issue. The inline fuse being probably the smartest fix for all of this. So the next thing we're going to do is install the updated angle connector. Uh, to do that, I need to remove the air box, uh, our suction cowl here, the belt, the fan, uh, because in order to uh, get to the angle connector, I have to go in from where the alternator is mounted. Uh, you don't need to take the intake manifold off for this, uh, but the alternator does need to be moved out of the way. So with the alternator out of the way, the next challenge is to disconnect the vacuum hose or the, uh, the breather hose from the angle connector without breaking the uh, breather hose. Because if you break the breather hose, your job just got a little bit more complicated. So um, key here is to reach in and uh, hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> because these, uh, these hoses are just known to always come off no problem. Here's a new angle connector. Uh, the one that came out, this was replaced in 2019 uh, under the original recall. Date code on this part suggests that to be true. This is a newly updated version that we're going to install now, uh, which is part of the third part of this recall, but hopefully the last. Uh, so really it's just a matter of sliding it back into the intake manifold, putting two new screws in, plugging in the electrical connector, reinstalling the um, crankcase vent hose, and then just bolting the engine back up. Uh, so at this point, new angle connector installed, the retrofit harness for the inline fuses installed, and we just need to do one more test. Uh, put the car into accessory mode, which again is going to power on the angle connector. Uh, after four minutes, the amperage needs to be between three tenths and one amp. If it's within that specification, you're good to go. You can put the rest of the car back together. If it stays above that amperage, then you have to do some troubleshooting on it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, we'll go ahead and do what we did before. And the uh, amp draw is uh, dropping pretty quickly. Uh, I can already tell this is probably going to settle somewhere around six to seven tenths when all is said and done. And again, as the amp draw is dropping, the heating element is coming up to temperature. And we're already in spec. So, I mean, at this point, you'll be able to button the rest of the car back up. You know you're good. Uh, but I'm going to wait for it to settle on an amperage. And we'll uh, measure the temperature at that point as well. So as um, we can see, we've waited the four minutes. Uh, the amp draw is pretty steady at 6 tenths of an amp. Angle connector's up at temperature. Um, yeah, mission accomplished. Uh, only thing I have to do, I'm going to power off the car, I'm going to install the 7.5 amp fuse, and then button the rest of the car up. But at this point, uh, this is what the recall entails. It's installing that retrofit harness and the new angle connector, obviously making sure that the amp draw is correct within a certain range. Uh, but this is exactly what's going to be done when you bring your car to the dealership to have this recall taken care of. Of course, you saw us do it. Parts are available. If you want to do it yourself, I guess you could. The only trick on that is it's going to be identifying the splice. Uh, by the series because it's going to change between a 5 series, a Z4, a 3 series. It's all different depending on the car that's installed. So that's why we really recommend, unless you have access to the technical information, to just have BMW take care of this for you. And they should because it is part of their safety recall. So all in all, you've seen the steps and the procedures that are involved in taking care of this active recall that BMW has on N52, N51, and N52N powered BMWs. Like we said at the beginning, this is 917,000 cars that all have some kind of risk of a possible engine bay fire. Uh, the likelihood that your vehicle will is not very high, but the fact of the matter is the initial design of the crankcase vent heater, uh, you know, basically the angle connector, which we replaced, uh, probably at the time wasn't foreseen to be such a problem. And ultimately the fix here is an updated part and installing that seven and a half amp inline fuse, which 
theoretically, we're hoping, is the final solution to this problem. Uh, we don't really know how many cars have actually been impacted by this problem, uh, but the fact of the matter is anything that is a safety hazard like this specific one, uh, BMW is taking care of it. It's part of their recall. Uh, all the parts are free. Installation is free. So there's no reason for you to do this on your own. In fact, we encourage you not to do it on your own. We're just simply putting this video out to explain what the nature of this recall is, what parts are being replaced, how that procedure is being taken care of, and how it relates to you and your vehicle. So we hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit like. And as always, subscribe. We have a lot of videos on the way. As always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.